what should be the starting step tell me first how should we start this step a b c are positive numbers yes tell me anyone can we take a as tan theta sir? yes you should why reason is, yes a b plus b c plus c a that formula is applicable furthermore if you observe these terms so this will be a square plus one by a so something sort of sine to theta right so there is an inclination towards this substitution so rather than taking a equal to 10 a i am doing going to take 10 inverse small a equal to capital will that good will that be good right because this this will be one to one correspondence so basically when i say i am taking a equal to 10 of let us say a all i am saying is 10 inverse small of a equal to capital right so this is nothing similarly b equal to 10 b this is a substitution b equal to 10 b and small c equal to 10 c so tell me all of you product two at a time summation 10 a 10 b equal to one is that clear so from here what can you infer and what about a b c Obviously, this, these a, b, c have to lie between 0 to pi by 2. Getting the point? Hmm? Yes, sir. So now, you, can you tell me what is going to be? If a, b, c are between 0 to pi by 2, then what is 2a, 2b, 2c? What about 2a, 2b, 2c? They will lie between, tell me, 0 to pi. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes. And now what you can observe that 2a plus 2b plus 2c. So, you know, in a triangle, what is the identities for 10? So, in a triangle summation 10a by 2, 10b by 2 equal to 1. So, the thing that a you are observing that a you should think of as 2a by 2 and this b you should think of as 2b by 2. So, 10 of 2a by 2 into 10 of 2b by 2 equal to 1. So from here, I can claim that 2a plus 2b plus 2c equal to pi. Is that clear or not? Yes, sir. Correct? Sum of the angles. Okay. 2a plus 2b plus 2c, this is equal to pi. Okay. What else? What else we want to confirm from this? a plus 1 upon a. So look here. So this will be 3 into a square plus 1 by a. That is 10 square plus 1. So, th uh, 6 by 2, 6 by sin 2, correct me if I am wrong, 6 by sin 2, 4 by sin 2, and what else, 5 by sin 2c, sorry, not 4, 8 and 10. So, 6, 8 and 10. So, what does it imply? That in that triangle, sin, signs are in the ratio 2a, 2b and 2c. So, sin 2a is to sin 2b is to sin 2c is 3 is to 4 is to 5. So, can I say the angles, the sides of that triangle, if they are corresponding sides are, let us say, a, b and c. Corresponding side means opposite sides I am taking. So, they will carry the same ratio according to sin law. a is to b is to c will be 3 is to 4 is to 5. Do all of you agree or no? For the triangle, whose angles are 2a, 2b, 2c. Yes, sir. Correct. That means it is a right angle triangle because 3 is to 4 is to 5. What does it imply? What does it imply? A right angle triangle. Right angle. So 2A, 3, 5, like that. 3K you can take. 5K, 5K and here 4K. 4K and this is 2B and hence 2C. So 2C is pi by 2. And you were asked to find the value of value of 5 times 1 minus a square cos 2a plus cos 2 1 minus a square upon 1 plus a square. So, this was asked in the problem. So, what is the value? Now, you can easily get the value. What is cos 2 theta? That is 4 by 5 and this is 3 by 5 plus 0. So, answer is 8. So, this is an integer problem. Are you able to get it? What is happening in this problem? 
Yes, sir. Got it, right? So like that you can do because what substitution we have done can inverse say equal to A. So like that you should proceed. So is it done for all? We'll move on to the next problem. Tell me first. Yes, sir. Okay, done. So I'm moving on to the next problem. Try this. Z1, Z2, Z3 are distinct complex numbers. Their magnitudes are all unity. Sum is non-zero. Sum of squares is zero. Find all possible values of nth powers of their sum. Sum of their nth powers. Okay, that is what you are required to do. So you have to get me all possible values. Yes, Manvita Balaji, you tell me. Sir, can we convert this Z1, Z2, Z3 into cos theta plus phi sin theta? First of all, uh, better that I don't think that is a good choice. Reason being, uh, you will you are going to bring more sort of variables into this, you know, because if you put Z1 equal to cos and sin alpha, then beta, that will complicate the problem. Keep the sanctity of the problem in the complex domain itself. And from here only you try to figure out using properties of modulus, etc. What can be said about this modulus? Okay. Hmm. Ved Prakash. I got for n equal to 4 as 0, for n equal to 6 as 3. Okay. But you have to explore all the exhaustive set of values this modulus can take. For n it will be zero. For n as two power for n as two power n. Okay. So you, you just now just you just have to tell me the values that we will explore at what n it is taking that. You have to first tell me what all values it can take. Zero and three. Only two values you are getting. Till now what I got are zero and three. Okay. What else? Sir, zero one root two root five. Root 2 you are getting. I don't think so. Hmm? Okay, how, how shall you start this for these type of problems? Sir, I took 1 square as uh, 1 and Z2 square as omega and Z3 square as omega square. Uh, Z1 square as? 1. 1. You are taking them 1. Why? Why necessarily 1? Yeah, it's given that Gen 1 square plus Z2 square plus Z3 square is 0, no, sir? Yes. That's why I took it as 1 and omega and omega square. That is not always the case, no? You should justify. See, <clears throat> before that, let me just take Z1 square, you define some complex number as W1, Z2 square as W2, and Z3 square or instead of W because you will confuse with Omega, let me define something else. Let us say Z1 square equal to small Z1 or small U1, let, let me define that. Okay, U1, U2 and U2 is a complex number. <clears throat> so again, what you can observe that their magnitudes are unity. You know? So their magnitudes are unity. So this, these are all equal to one. Okay. So what you said is correct, but that is with respect to Z1 square, Z2 square, Z3 square. And, but don't take them one omega and omega square. Okay. You should generalize this because their sum is not equal to zero. Getting the point? So you have to exclude that possibility. Now see here, if magnitudes of Z1, Z2, Z3 are one, so their square is also one magnitude of their square. This is all right. Tell me. Hmm? And their sum is zero. Tell me fast. Is it clear? Yes, sir. And you are required to obtain all possible values of what? What is Z1? Basically, Z1 square u1 power n by 2. Can I write it like this? Plus u2 power n by 2. Taking all the square roots into consideration. Huh? So there won't be any harm in this, right? So this is your problem. 
now what you said you can easily observe and easily prove via this so what is pc stands for tell me what am i going to do with this taking conjugates taking conjugate good so taking conjugate u1 bar u2 bar u3 bar and what is u1 bar if magnitude is 1 it is 1 upon u1 this all of you must be knowing very well right so this can be simplified as minus 1 upon u3 and what is u3 u3 is minus 1 upon u1 plus u2 from the first equation here so if you cross multiply this what will you get what will you get tell me u1 square plus u2 square plus u1 u2 equal to 0 is that clear hmm yes sir okay yes sir now now what should i do basically let me again make a slight more substitution instead of u1 i want to write u huh? instead of u1 let me write u there will be no harm but it will be like i want to express everything in terms of u now is that okay it hardly makes any difference let me write u okay so this you must be knowing what is the solution of this x square plus y square plus x y equal to zero x equal to y omega and x equal to y omega square these are the two solutions so here u2 will be either u omega or u2 will be u omega square do all of you agree with this yes sir tell me basically how do you get it you divide by u square and put u2 by u equal to x so you will get x square plus x plus 1 equal to 0 whose roots are omega and omega square. so like that you get it similarly if i had eliminated let us say u2 and kept the equation in terms of u and u3 in this similar manner i could have obtained u3 as u omega or u omega square so this is uh, this result i want you to remember see what i want you guys to remember this thing ki whenever the magnitudes of all are one and their sum vanishes so it is just like vector so then in terms of one u2 could be this into omega and this could be this into omega square magnitudes are all unity is that clear in the first step correct so now you have to explore all possible options so u1 this is this is u and right? so u power n by 2 what is u2 power n by 2 so let us take the possibilities that are in front of you so if i take like u2 as u omega so this will be what can you tell me so we are exploring the first possibility when u2 is u2 is u omega so this will become u power n by 2 omega power n by 2 you right? know this is case one so case one when u2 is u omega so we are exploring this so and u3 what about u3 you have four four possibilities in front of you so i'm taking one by one u omega u3 is also u omega okay so u power n by 2 omega power n by 2 so you can take u power n by 2 common its magnitude will be 1 so 1 plus what will be left omega power n by 2 again omega so 1 plus 2 omega what should i write 1 plus 2 omega power n by 2 whole mod and n is a natural number greater than 2 so what all possible values can it take hmm so if n is 2 if n is 2 see what we are discussing please pay attention complex numbers are what u is it clear and what next tell me u omega this is the this is the second term u2 as u omega and what about u3 what about u3 can i take u3 as u omega 
not can i no this i cannot take why because their sum is zero so if i have taken u2 as u omega then u3 must be taken as tell me u omega square yes so there i cannot write it like this so this will be omega power n only okay omega power n so this will be omega power n by 2 plus plus omega power n is there anything else we have to keep in mind in addition to this yes that z1 plus z2 plus z3 must not be equal to 0 so this is fine one of these this, this will not make any difference so let me take u2 equal to u omega i am omitting all this right? and u3 equal to this but after this also it is not straight forward because there is one more condition that you have to keep in mind their sum of z1 plus z2 plus z3 should be non zero so what is going to be z1 from above what is z1 tell me plus minus root of u yes what is going to be z2 it is square root of u2 so that will be how much u omega so plus minus under root u into omega square please make sure that you are comfortable with this and then i can directly put these values only in that term and z3 equal to plus minus root of u3 that will be plus minus root u into omega see omega is also omega power 4 so i have taken square root in this manner will that work yes sir okay? correct so now which all possibilities i have to rule out tell me what is not allowed that z1 plus z2 plus z3 being equal to 0 is not allowed that means taking this as plus this as plus omega this as plus omega square is not allowed or taking this as minus 1 this as minus omega this as minus omega square these two are not allowed correct so let me directly put these values so whatever else is there that is all always allowed so now tell me what is going to be the value so let me first put z1 so what was z1 power n so z1 power n so if i put root u that is u power n by 2 no problem i can put put it in this manner correct what about u2 power n by 2 or z2 power n so z2 i shall keep suppose z2 i am keeping root root u into omega square so if it is root u into omega square so it will be u power n by 2 into omega power 2 then then z3 i should keep as tell me minus root u into omega yes minus root u into omega so what is its power n power n minus 1 power n into minus of root u in n for 2 into omega 2 power n by 2 into omega, omega power n is that clear now u power n by 2 you can take outside that is what i wanted you guys to pay attention to omega power n now you can simply substitute any value of n so via this option but all possibilities will arise right you know So if n is equal to two, so one plus omega one plus omega, and then n is equal to two, so this zero is allowed. Zero will come. Yes, n by zero will get. And for n equal to three, what will you get? Pardon me. It is n by two, not n. Uh, minus one power. Uh, min okay, minus one power. Right, u power z two. No, no, z two power n was there, no. And z three power n. What three, what is z three power n? Okay. I am substituting substituting beta here directly. I am substituting here. Yes. This yes. was this was just to tell you, whenever you do this, you cannot directly write this because sum of z one z two z three is non zero. Okay. Right? Okay. So actually, we have reverted back to this. So I am writing it here. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Now, if I put n equal to three, what is going to happen? One then will get one. when you will get right? so i think till modulo 3 you should do i believe no minus 1 is also there so you should have to keep on checking some more values for n equal to 4 what will happen 
I think even values will all give you zero. Yes. Because if you put n equal, yes, even zero three even values. Correct. So for n equal to two m, this will always no. be zero. So but six m won't give three. Correct. A multiple of three will come, na? Six won't give. So for six, what will be the value? Very good. For five, no. But before that, for five, what is the value? When n is five. When n is five, so again a different value will come. Oh, In fact, for four, yeah, four it is zero. For five, see different value will come. This will come one plus omega square and minus omega. Are you getting this or not? Yes, sir. For five, no, no, no. For five also, this will be one. Sir, one plus square. omega minus omega square. For five, one plus omega, yes, one plus omega minus omega, which is mod is two, I think. Can you check this? Yes, sir. See the possibilities. Okay. So next, for omega equal to sorry, for n equal to six, I think this will be three. And now everything will repeat. Three. Because we have checked. Now everything will repeat. Yes. Now these are not the only four values. Can we explore the another possibility? Let us check. See what we have taken now. I have taken z one equal to root u, है ना? And then z two I took as root u omega square, so that their sum is non-zero. And z three I took as minus root u omega. Okay. So what could be the other possibility? I think this will exhaust all cases, na? Because even if I, a uh, pardon me, Z one has negative and Z two Z three has positives. Ah, huh, that that I should take because two positive and one negative we have taken minus one power n. So you want me to take Z one as negative? Yes. So Z one I want to take as minus. And what about this? These two both I want to take as plus. This is the second case. Yes. So what will happen? So minus one power n, and then u power n by two. Anyway, I am taking out plus omega power two n plus omega power. Acha, this thing. Why am I doing here? See, I can interchange here minus one power n to to all the three terms. See my pointer here. Rather than uh, doing here the algebra, I should do it here itself. So minus one power n I have taken to the left extreme. Correct. Even if you take two minus and one plus, that will be the same because omega power n and omega power two n they behave in the same manner. Are you getting the point? Please tell me. Yes, sir. Yes. So now you tell me what will be the value? Is there anything different that I am going to get? N equal to two. What will be the value? N equal to two. That will be zero only. Zero. zero. Three. What will be the value? That will be one. I think for three. Okay. One. I think I I won't get uh, anything else. You know, four for four. What will be the value? That will be again zero for five. That is the same because for five it will be two. Two only. I won't get anything else. I think we have because we have taken everything into consideration there itself. You know, there won't be any other values. For n equal to six, it will be three. Correct. So, what all possible values it can take? They could be zero, one, two, and is that clear? Zero, one, two, and three. Understood? Okay. Okay. Next, we move on to the next problem. So, if these two integrals are zero, function is continuous. You have to show that. Function will have at least two solutions in open zero to pi. Sir, since uh, sin x is always positive in zero to pi, can we say that f of x has at least one root in zero to pi? Why for sin x you are taking the argument? Sin x is always positive, so f of x for zero to pi. Yeah, it it must have at least one root, no sir? Yeah. That is always there because at least one root, so you all must be able to do correct. At least one yes, root sir. will be there. 
Yes. Then we will do integral f of x cos x as integral by part, sir. Okay. We will get integral okay. f dash Let of x into. Okay. First of all, it is not given whether f is differentiable or not. Mind it. Even if that were true, so let me see how you are proceeding. So, see, first of all, all of you should be able to understand that sin x is always positive in zero to pi open. So, f x has to somewhere cross the x axis between zero to pi. So, at least one root is there. At least one root. Correct. At least one root. Let me call that root as L. So, next, what were you saying? Applying by parts, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Samarth is asking me to apply by parts in cos x. So, first function you are taking as fx. So, yes, fx sir. into sin x. You know, but mind it, this I can only apply if he had given function to be differentiable. So, I am giving you a liberty. I am also taking f to be differentiable. Suppose that was the case. So let us see. Even then, your argument is valid or not. Derivative of first into integral of Okay. What next? So, this will again vanish. Yes, sir. Again, we will get it as a equal to 0, no, sir. Integral 0 to pi f dash of x sin x dx. Uh, this will be what? 0. This we are getting as 0, why? Right? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is given as 0. Okay. This is, yes, sir. Right, this is given as 0. Okay. Again, f dash of x will have one at least one root. F dash will have at least one root. Yes, this is also fine. And we know that f of x is crossing x axis, no, sir. Yes. I thought it, then f of x must have at least two roots in uh -huh. the. Oh. Suppose this is this is crossing the x axis. It could be like this. F dash could be equal to zero anywhere. That does not matter. So it, it does not cross twice, no? Yes, sir. That argument won't work. Okay. Okay, try something else. Yes. Anybody else who want to share his or her thoughts in this problem? Yes, Talin Babu, Nakka. You want to say something? So, so I will tell you how to do this. Okay. Since we have obtained x equal to alpha, alpha, a fixed one root. Okay. Now we are looking whether there could be one more root other than alpha, either in zero to alpha or in alpha to pi. Alpha two. Is there any method by virtue of which I can club these two integrals in Sir, terms can of we say sign that yeah. f of x is symmetric about pi by two? f of x is symmetric about pi by 2. How can you say that? For getting area equal to 0. For getting? Means area is equal to 0. It, it need not be the case. Why is that so? Cos x is there. Na? When you say something is symmetric about pi by 2, then you must be able to show that f of pi by 2 plus x should be same as f of pi by 2 minus x. Yes. Okay? I don't think that will work because if, even if you split this 0 to pi by 2 of this and then from pi by 2 to pi of this. So, both of them first will convert into f of pi by 2 minus x into sin x. Another will convert as pi by 2 to pi. So, there is no way in which I can obtain this relation for each x in 0 to pi. right? So, you cannot say that. I am asking you that is there any way in which I can connect these two integrals, bringing alpha also into picture. Hmm? Like what is sin a cos b plus cos a sin b or minus cos a sin b? Hmm? What is sin a cos b minus cos a sin b? Sin of? Tell me first. A minus b. A minus b. 
so zero to pi f x. So I am deliberately taking x minus alpha. This is the same alpha which is the which is the root, which is the root. This is the same alpha. So what do you say about this integral? Is it zero? Is it zero? Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. Sir. Why? You multiply yes. the second integral by cos alpha and first integral by sin alpha and then subtract. That's what I have done. Or open here. Sin x cos alpha minus cos x sin alpha. Constant term you can take out. So this is zero. Is that clear? But f of x, we don't know about the sign of this. But we know about the sign of sin of x minus alpha. Since alpha is a value between zero to pi. So I want to say that between zero to alpha it will possess negative sign. Sin of x minus alpha I am talking. And alpha to pi, it will possess what? Positive sign. Do you agree? Hmm? Yes, sir. Correct. Now try to see this. This has to be zero. So suppose this is from zero to alpha. Fx I am taking as positive. Fx I am taking as positive. So at alpha it is zero. At alpha it is zero. So the sign of this is positive here. Not positive, sorry. This is negative here. Sign of x minus alpha term. And this is positive here. Okay. Now if zero to alpha, this whole term is zero. Suppose between zero to alpha, let me take f to be positive. Without loss of energy. Let me take f is always positive between 0 to alpha. Correct? So, what will be the sign of this? What will be the sign of this? Tell me. Negative. Hmm? Negative. Negative, right? This sign will be negative. So, what should be the sign of the second term to make the resultant 0? Tell me. Positive. Positive. This is already positive. This is already positive. So, here, what can be said about fx? Here, what can be said about fx? Tell me. Here, f. To make it zero. To make it zero. Like, see, see what, what I'm doing. I will try to explain it through now. Suppose between zero to alpha, it is like this. And after that, it, it is coming down. It is. I'm assuming it has exactly one root. That is what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm just drawing this for your convenience. This is the graph of F I have drawn continuous function. I have taken only one root. So from zero to alpha, the sign of F is positive. So positive into negative is this. And for alpha from alpha to pi, what is the sign of this? Tell positive. Me. No, no, here negative. from the diagram, from the diagram. Negative. Negative. So overall it is negative. So can negative plus negative be equal to zero? Tell me. No. That means this case is ruled out. So what is ruled out? That 0 to alpha f, f is positive and alpha 2 pi f is negative is not possible. Similarly, what will not be possible? Like this also, it will not be possible. For 0, because here what will happen? The first quantity will become positive. Second will also become positive. Second integral. I1 and I2. This is integral I1. This is integral I2. That means that means fx should cross x axis once more, at least once more. Do you agree or not? Yes, sir. Yes. So this is the proof that fx will have at least two solutions. You understood the approach? Bring in that root into account. There was one more problem that I discussed, I told you came in 2006 in JE. So this is a similar type of problem where you where you take care of the root itself in terms of root, you argue. Okay. Okay. Sir, can both roots be alpha and alpha? No, that, that cannot be the case. See, but I, both roots, if you take alpha and alpha, that would only mean that fx is zero at only x equal to alpha. But for the sum of these two integrals to be zero, see very carefully. If if I were to take this graph, so you are asking me to take. 
I will also take that case which you are telling me that is it possible that FX is like this? It has to cross, but otherwise this cannot be the graph of it because this will not make the second term. See above my pointer. This cannot be zero. This area cannot be zero. If this area is to zero, then it has to go below the x-axis. It has to have some part above and some part below at some alpha. Getting the point? Yes. And from the second relation that we have shown just now, it is again area. So area cannot one point if value at one point cannot alter the area at all. Are you able to get this point? Value attained by a function at a particular point is not going to decide your area. Area is decided by the values taken in an interval. Okay. So I believe this is clear to all. This you have to show using calculus to try to think of a function. You are able to do it? Yes, sir. Tell me the function. A power x plus b power x plus c power x. Very good. X. Very good. So you should start with fx equal to a power x plus b power x plus c power x. Okay. So next is f dash. So what is f dash? Like that you did, right? Yes, sir. And then what? Again, double again differentiate. Correct. F double dash. So what is F double dash? So since A, B, C are positive numbers, F double dash C, F double dash X is strictly positive. Right? Yes. Is that clear? A power X, B power X, C power L and square. That means, that means what? F dash is F dash is f dash is increasing. Okay. So f dash is increasing. And what about f dash zero? Zero. Ln of ABC, that is one. This is zero. Therefore, if x is greater than zero, so x is greater than zero. That means f dash is increasing function. So f dash x will be greater than f dash zero since f dash is increasing. Can I say that? Greater than equal to sir, because greater than equal to because f double dash can be zero to f double dash can be zero to f double dash can be zero. Okay. F double dash is zero at what point? If a b c are one. If a b c are all one, no? yes. this will be equal. Yes, yes, yes. So let me take it if x is greater than zero. Very good. Because that would be, in fact, f double dash also I should have put greater than equal to sign. No? Right. So f dash x is greater than or equal to f dash c. Okay. Now what is f dash 0? Zero, 0. That means f dash x is greater than or equal to 0. Yes. So what does it imply? That f is increasing? Tell me is it clear or not? Yes, sir. That's it. Therefore, f of 2 must be smaller than or equal to f of 3. So this was the requirement. a square plus b square smaller than a cube plus b cube plus c. Is it okay? I will write uh, next. To prove using algebras. Pardon me. Algebra, so you can take like C is there, no? So you can try replacing C by one upon A B, and then you have to you can you can apply the power mean inequality. But that is of not concern here because in JE syllabus they only make sure that at most you should be able to solve it using AMGM inequality. So that is why I have asked you to prove it using calculus, which is part of your JE advanced syllabus also. Getting the point? Yes, sir. So always remember here algebra basically inequalities, they only prefer AMG. Though there are many inequalities that you can apply, but in JE, hardly any problem came till now where you have to use any other inequality. 
if at all it is used okay okay so next problem so the triangles abc and a dash b dash c dash have the same centroid then you have to show that a a dash b b dash c c c dash could be the sides of a triangle and here you are assuming that sum of no two segments is equal to the third one so either it could be greater or it could be less so you have to argue that it is possible that it will be greater okay try this sir can we prove this by vector algebra yes you have to prove this using vectors because if you do it via geometry it will take time you sir, are able to show it yes sir able to show it na we can take origin as centroid and yes and then what else position vector of a as a x1 b as x2 and c as x3 bar correct see this is a very straight forward problem let me make this first okay so they have the same centroid so let me mark the centroid here as the origin of vectors a b c okay so this a i can take as a vector b i can take as b vector and c i can take as c vector. and this let me take a dash b dash and c dash so this is a dash vector position vector i am taking this is b dash yes now tell me what next sir we know that a bar plus b bar plus c bar is zero very good because the centroid is this plus this by 3 this is also zero and this yes, is also a dash plus b dash this is a very straight forward problem this by 3 equal to this by 3 you know basically these are the centroids and this we have taken as zero zero vector yes next now a a dash equal to a bar minus a a yes. dash bar minus a bar yes so a minus a dash that means a dash minus a plus b dash minus b dash b. minus this is equal to zero that means a a dash vector a a dash vector plus plus b b, b dash, dash C C dash vector. Sum of these three vectors is zero. That means first of all, if the sum of three vectors is zero, they must be coplanar. That you all know, you know. So one yes. thing is there that they must be coplanar. These vectors A dash B dash. Now there are only two possibilities if sum of three vectors is zero. What is that? Either they will be yeah. collinear or non triangle. yes if they are collinear that is ruled out because that could only happen if sum of two sides is equal to third side suppose this is of magnitude 2 this is of magnitude 3 and in reverse direction this is of magnitude 5 then this is possible but this is ruled out why this is ruled out because it is given sum of no two segments of these a a dash b b dash c c dash is equal to third the only possibility for this to be so that they form a triangle like this is a a dash going in this direction so just an example b b dash going in this direction and c c dash going in this direction like that you have you should have very good so some of these three vectors must be a null is that clear to us yes yes sir good okay i am taking the next problem find the number of ways in which x1 x2 till x2n can take values either 0 or 1 these are the binary values such that summation of the squares of the difference ordered difference okay sorry unordered difference because i less than j this is maximum this is max you have to tell me the number of ways. some of the elements are zero rest all are one hai na only zero and one is allowed so you have to make sure that the 
sum of the difference, sum of the square of the difference, okay, is maximum for all pairs i comma j such that i less than j between one two. So tell me, how will you proceed? How will you start? Tell me. Hmm? First of all, taking you n take, equal to one. And, okay. Uh, n equal to no, n not, equal to no, not for you. Don't fix condition on n, beta. First, you tell me uh, x i minus x j square will contain what all terms. So this will be like if I fix, for example, I am fixing i equal to one. So I can go till two to two n, right? So I am just writing it for you x one minus x three square. And so on till x one minus x two n square, fixing i equal to one. This is after fixing i equal to one. And if I fix i equal to two, what all terms will I get? Up Getting to two n. Yes. And so on, x two minus. This will contain one less term, you know. And finally, if you proceed in the same manner. The last term that I am going to get is this. Do all of you agree or no? No, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, we pick two. Yeah, someone said no. Oh. There will be. Yeah, right, right. Sorry, sir. This is not n. This is two n minus one. Correct. Now it is clear. Yes, sir. Now you agree. Okay. So now tell me, by symmetry, all x one and x two they will have the powers have the same coefficient. So what is the coefficient of x one square that you are observing from here? So can I write this as not n two n minus from one to two n two n minus one into x one square plus x two square up to x two n square. By symmetry, each and everything has to come. Agree? All terms will come two n minus one times, minus twice double summation. Double summation, you understand? S two I will write. S two means sum of the product taken to at it. Sum of product taken to at it. This you understood or not? Yes. Taken two at a time means all possible products x one x two x one x three x one x four like that x two x three minus two. Is this clear or not? Tell me first. Yes, sir. Everybody. Yes. Clear, sir. Okay. Now s two I want to write again in terms of this. So this I want to write as two n minus one. Let me put it this as. Summation x i square. No? Keep it as it is. <laughs> What is two s two? So if I perform summation x i whole square, x one plus x two plus x two n whole square. This will contain what all terms? Summation x i square minus two s two. Oh, sorry, plus two s two. Hmm. Agree or not? Yes, sir. So, what is two s two from here? So, this will be summation x i square minus summation of x i. Correct. So, if I again plug this, so this will be two n summation x i square minus summation x i points. So, till here, is it clear to all? Yes. Now, sir, is answer two n c n? I think so. Yes. So you have done in the same manner, sir. From second step, I, I took sigma x i square as r, sir. Okay. And s two as r c two. Yes. And I differentiated and found r, sir. Okay. No, no, no. Come again. What did you do in the first step? I took uh, among two and any r terms as one, sir. Yes. Yes. No so need to differentiate. Yeah, that is okay. No need to differentiate. In fact, what you can directly do here, you can observe that 
number of zeros and number of ones are to be decided. You have done is perfectly all right, but there is no need of differentiation. You know? Directly you can tell that. So if I take number of zeros as R, that means exactly, exactly R elements are taking zero values and exactly 2n minus R elements. This is I'm assuming, I'm taking as a case. Okay. And exactly 2n minus R are assuming one value. Is that clear? Yes. Or let, let me put it the other way around. That will be better, I think. Let me take R as taking one value. No, no, that, that is okay. 2n minus R here only. That will not make any difference. Okay. So come here. So 2n times, this will become what? So x1 square, how many will be 1? I think 2n minus R. Is that clear? Yes. yes. 2n minus R are all 1. And sum of squares, this will be what? 2n minus R whole square. 2n minus R whole square. Yes. Yes, sir. So if I take 2n minus R common, so this will be R. So this you can directly say this product, since their sum is constant, this product will be maximum AMGM only when they both are equal. So this will attain its maximum when R, when they are equally distributed. 2n minus r. Okay, that means r equal to n. n. That means exactly half half of them should take zero value. The rest half should take one value. Only then this would be maximum. Can you see basically what is this? If you observe carefully, xi minus xj square summation, what does it denote? Hmm? What does it denote? Basically, it denotes sort of variance. Getting the point or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sort of variance because it is a measure of the of the variation of the values in the data with respect to each other. Like how far are they? X to minus x to whole square. And whole square is taking care of, they are not cancelling out. And everything is so that is how statistics goes. So R equal to N. This you, you could have assumed by common sense also that exactly at the midway this should head, uh, this should be maximum if you split it half half. And 0 or 1 is not allowed. Any two values if you take, you will get the same answer. 0 and 1 are of no significance here. Two particular values you can take. Do you agree or not? Hmm? So taking N values, how many ways I can select? So very good. You can select in 2n cn ways. 2n cn ways. Is that clear? See, tell me what is the formula for variance? What is the formula? If I have a data, how do you define variance of a random variable x? Suppose this is a set. So this is understood now? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes. Suppose I have a set. Because this time, statistics will also come. One question they will ask until x2 and what is the variance of this? What is the variance? So let me take this as a random variable capital X. Okay. Having these values and they can, uh, they can also bring in probability here. So once I have written this, then I'm assuming that X can take all of these values equally likely. And if X is taking X1 is probability P1, then factor of P1 will also come in the variance. Correct. So what, what is variance basically? It is the expected value of, tell me, x minus xi whole square. This is how you get it. What is the expected value of this? This is your variance. Tell me first. Yes. So this, yes, is, yes, this is what? E of x square minus 2 times summation of this, basically summation of this. So, this will be like this. So expected value summation, I shall put it here. Okay, expected value of this summation. The summation I'm putting it inside. So tell me. So I'm just removing it for the timing. X minus X I will do. 
So expected value of x, then minus twice of. Tell me what. X i into e of x, and what else? Plus e of x square. X i square is e of x square. Correct. E of x square you can do. So this is going to be what? E of x square. And here, what will come? Basically, x i square will come. No, x i square. So this will become minus two mu square plus mu square like that. Okay. So this will ultimately give you e of x square, and mu is nothing but expected value of x. So this holds. You're getting this expected means you have to again divide by n like that. E is e is also there. Here. Expected value of this e is also there. And this whole is what expected value of this whole is. Is that clear? Hmm? So this is the formula for variance of random variable x. So what is the expected value of x square? You tell me. That is x one square plus x two square plus x n square by n by two n if data is two n. And what is this? This is mu. Correct or not? Yes. So basically, he asked you to do this only. So two n into mu square mu was this whole divided by n. So see the expression that we have obtained over here. So two n summation x i square minus of this. Is that clear or not? So if I divide this by n, suppose divide this by n, then I have to multiply by n square. And if I divide this by n, I have to multiply by n square. You're not getting the point. Hmm? So if I take n square common, what will come here? Pardon me. Divide by two n. Divide by two n. Acha acha. Divide by two n. Okay. So divide by two n. So this will be how much? Four na? Four n square. And here also I want to keep two. So this will become four like that. Okay. And then you can take n square common. In fact, four n square common. So this will just become what summation of x i square by two n. This is the expected value of x square. And summation of x i by two n. This is the average. Hey, please tell me if you are getting or not. So e of x square. So this is just a proof that variance will be maximum at the equal distribution. And this is not nothing but variance of x. I think I have written everything correctly or not? Hmm? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Clear, na? Okay, so you have to keep this in mind. So we'll see you in the next class. So take care. Take care, sir. Okay. Yeah, sir. Is the properties of triangle in uh, advanced syllabus, sir? No, actually, uh, you should not say it like that because they have just now not mentioned that specifically. But what they could ask sometimes it might be useful in coordinate geometry problem. So what we might expect there will not be a direct problem of properties of triangle that you can rest be assured because they have not written that. Right? But basic sine law, cosine law that they can always use. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Take care. See you in the next class. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.